Hey everybody, welcome back to Stamping School. I've got some new stuff to show you that will be coming out September 4th in what I call the Stampin' Up! Holiday Catalog. They call it the September through the end of December catalog. I like holiday better, but these don't have to be holiday. I love birds anytime. We actually um, got this a few months ago during, um, I think it was for uh, creativity at home. We could get this sweet early, but anything with birds, I'm in. This is called Winterly Tree Tops. And there's dyes and there's paper and there's accessories and twine and all kinds of fun stuff to go with it. So I'm gonna show you two things this week and then two things with it next week because I am headed out of town and I wanna kind of spread out the two projects. So two projects with it this week and two projects with it next week. All right, so let's look at this. Uh, cute birds that you can watercolor nice birds. And then there's dies that cut everything out. So if you want to, you can uh, stamp and cut out all these birds, but the dies will also match the designer paper. So if you end up getting this bundle, make sure you get the designer paper too. Um, one of the special things about the die set is this frame, which I'll be using this next week, but it just creates a really cool frame. There are um, embellishments in pecan and basic beige and like a creamy ivory and garden green twine in really pretty fall and winter colors. And then the designer paper. Uh, I got one pack of it and I have used so much of it. So all sorts of birds. This die right here will cut out this set of birds here. So now this has a little extra thing because it matches one of the holiday birds, but this will cut this part out here, just the birds on this one. So there's a few of those around. I'm gonna use this chickadee next week. This is what the backside looks like. Those pool party and a bunch of little circly dots. This one I'm gonna to use today. I love this page. It's just got all these really great birch trees. And then a little pattern on this side. We're gonna use this one today. There's a bunch of, just a bunch of little birds that you can circle punch out or do something with or just use it as a background. Cute little birds. And this pattern, a nice garden green stripe. This one has everything that will be cut out with the dies. So it has this bird right here, which I've already forgotten the name of. I'm like, what kind of a bird is that? It's black with a kind of a reddish belly. Google that. And I did Google it. Now I can't remember the name of it. But this die will cut this out. And this die will cut this out. These two birds here. And there's also stamps that are exactly the same. So if the designer paper runs out, you still have the stamps that match the dies. There's a whole page of that. The other side, pool party design. A birch, like a wood green birch right here, which actually there is an embossing folder too in the suite. It looks like this, it's a real big one. It's the six inches by eight and a half, so it does a whole half sheet of paper. Um, it's like a uh, it's like a birch. I did this side, I inked the folder just to see how it would look to make birch. And it's kind of pretty. So I'm gonna use this as a, a background today. So it looks like a bunch of those little, I don't know if they're pussy willows, I don't know what those are, branches on the other side. This one is one of those great sheets of paper and I have used it to pieces as you can tell. So it's got all of this on one side and this on the other so you can go four inch panels, okay, to make these really cool designs which we are gonna use this one today. So that's the designer paper. I had a lot of fun playing with this bundle. Oh, oh and the other thing I wanna tell you, this one right here kinda looks like little angel wings does this stamp, um, it'll cut this one out. However, I had a little bit of trouble with it. I kept, I got it really close, but if you're really particular, it is a little hard to line up. So here is the stamp and this goes over top of it. And to me, it's close. It doesn't seem to be 100% perfect, but if it's good enough, it's good enough. I have to let it go when it's not 
100% perfect. <laughs> but like this one, I was way off when I cut it. You can tell that the top is way more white than the bottom. But then I did better on this one. So it is possible. It just, a little, to me, it was just a little bit harder to line up, but I really like it. I'll probably end up just stamping it and using it as opposed to trying to cut it out every time, but it's, it's good. And these are all great. Okay, card number one. I love this card. I love the panels behind here and I love these birds. Now on these right here, I stamp them and then color them to match the designer paper. So you can, you can just follow the designer paper when you use your blends because the artists use our colors when they color the designer paper. So everything kind of works together. But cutting it out from the designer paper is just too easy. Lost Lagoon card base. Oh, you could do pool party too. I just like the Lost Lagoon in their, in their little heads. Now to do this panel on here, I want this white to show through. So I started with a four by five and a quarter inch white panel. It doesn't have to be really good cardstock. It just needs to be white because we're gonna cover it up mostly and use it as a guide. You just want this to show. Now you can change these around if you want to, but here is the magic formula that I like. Two by four in the middle, one and a half by four on the top and one and a half by four on the bottom. That is however you wanna use the paper. For instance, on this one, I did this pattern, which I really love. However, it is the back of this one and I wanted to save it. So I'm gonna switch my, my figures around a little bit because I can take a little bit off the middle of this page, but I didn't wanna dig too far in there. So I'm making the middle one, the large one, at two by four right here in the middle. And oops, I'm gonna start on the bottom first. So I'm gonna take my green on the bottom, sort of to ground it like grass almost. Green on the bottom, one and a half by four. And then we'll do the top. So I'm gonna do this one on the top so I can save, <laughs> do one and a half inches on that one, or just pick and choose another pattern. I just like this one. It's, got, it's almost got little bird feet on there. And then the two inch by four inch right in the middle and then you can get your lines. See? You got your little lines there. And then you make sure you trim that off if it's not perfect. And then the rest goes together easily. I probably don't have to show you too much. This is a deckled rectangle that I popped up on dimensionals. Stamp it first with the sentiment that comes in that stamp set. And then the birds are cut from the designer paper. I do take my pool party and do a little flicking on here with the cap, just get a little, a little bit there. I use the brush tip for that. A little splattering. This panel gets glued to the pool party. And st I'll stamp my sentiment here and then put my bird on top. So look how easy. Oh my gosh, I just love that designer paper. Super easy. And this twine, if you take a little bit of twine, my eight inches of it, and you just slip it under the branch. So you don't even have to try to glue it on or tie it on or whatever. Just slip it through there and tie it. And remember, wherever you turn it, that's where your tails are gonna go. So I'm gonna turn it my card this way. So when I tie it, I want my tails to come this way. I love the garden green twine, any twine, give it to me in every color, I'll take it. And then little embellishments, and then let me show you what the inside looks like. I got a little wink of Stella, little glitter glitter on the berries. Oops, I just crunched his little tail, oops. A bigger deckel on the inside, the sentiment from the stamp set, and one of the birds and some of these little guys. All right, there's card number one. I think this is, you could easily change this out for lots of different colors. It doesn't have to be the holidays, it can just be every day, but it does feel more wintry to me. The berries and then the little speckled blues, it's, I feel like it's a winter card. This is my second card and I wanna do something I haven't done in years to make paper beads as a little accent right there. And this arch works great with this paper. This is, you might even have it already. This is from Garden Meadow Bundle. And this one, it comes with the little fence. Everybody loved the fence die that's in this. 
with the, with the garden meadow dies, but I love this arch. And I'm using a color that I rarely use, the gray granite. And you could also do a smoky slate, which would work okay. So here is the gray granite card. And there's that paper that I told you about that you can cut into strips of four inches. And then you just sort of pick and choose where you want your birds and your opening to go underneath it. So it doesn't even have to be a full four inches, but you can kind of see all the different scenes that you could do Oops, through there. So I chose this one right here, and here is that texture. Can you see that texture behind there? Yeah. Copper clay, like a rust colored, four by five and a quarter. First I cut this out, and then I ran the whole thing through. Now we can use this for something else later. The first thing we need to do is stick this underneath there and glue it down. So really easy. The hardest part about this card is the paper beads, which we'll do next. They take a little bit longer, but I think it's kind of fun. So this is just a super easy card. Anything with a window, I love it. You could also make this a fun shaker card by putting acetate and some shakers in it. So pretty. Now I did birthday, but you can do anything. This is from the Garden Meadow, but I'm always needing birthday cards. So early espresso, and I'm just stamping the happy birthday. Pretty easy. And then that will just go on with dimensionals right there. All right, now let's do these paper beads. So what you need are two triangles like that. And you need something to attach them to, like the twine. And you start with two pieces. They're about one by one and a half inches and make your triangles. So you just cut like that. You just need two triangles. The size of this edge is how long your bead is gonna be. So if that seems too much, you can always do, some of these little guys can make little beads, see, right there. So we're gonna stick with that. Then what you're gonna need is some kind of a skewer or a toothpick. Skewers are bigger, so that kind of leaves you with a bigger hole. I kind of like the toothpick the best. That works really good. And then your designer paper, depending on what you want. I did this pattern because I like the colors. So we're gonna flip that over, and now you need to measure. If you know the trick to measure your twine, if you go one length of the card and around, that's two and three, that's a knot. Four is a bow. In this case, we're gonna do four lengths of this twine so that we can tie this on. So this is gonna come around, tie your knot up at the top, not too tight, but tight. <laughs> I'm giving myself some extra room and then we figure out where we want our beads. So I probably will take one down here and then one up here. Right here, you wanna put some good adhesive, nice and strong adhesive. And right on this edge, we're gonna put the twine. I like it to come out the edge but sometimes, but it doesn't have to. You can just stop it right there. Okay, can you see that? And then from there, you wanna make sure your adhesive comes all the way down. And then we're gonna take that toothpick and we're gonna roll and roll. And it's a little finger workout. I mean, you know, you're gonna, you gotta get in there and roll that up all the way as tight as you can, but then you still wanna be able to get the toothpick out. Okay, there's a little bit of a dance there because you don't want the toothpick to stay in there forever. All right, there, and then pull it out. Now make sure that that very tip for that little point stays down. That's important. The last thing that's gonna kind of help it look like a paper bead is to make it glossy. Now you can also um, tuck the edges up in there. You just kind of look at it and see how you like it. If you think it's too small, or you can point the ends, but, but to make it look like a bead, you wanna make it glossy. 
<laughs> and this is my favorite thing to make it glossy. This is my favorite top coat nail polish. I found it at Publix recently for $5. I was so excited because I pay $10 for it on Amazon. It's called Out the Door. It's a super fast drying top coat for nails. I love this stuff. And so you could, of course, you know, you can put a shiny glue on it and wait for it to dry. You could verse the market and emboss it with embossing powder. All of that is good, but, but there's just something fast about using a good top coat of nail polish. And it's quick and it dries. And after a day or so, it doesn't smell like nail polish anymore. And it's super thick and it works great to make it nice and shiny and seal all the edges. And once that dries, it'll be glossy and pretty and it'll look like little paper beads. It's like something a little extra. I mean, obviously you're not gonna make a hundred of these, but if you wanna do something special for someone, it is kind of fun. All right, let me show you the inside. I took a piece of that designer paper that I had left over here, added another cut birds, and this is from the Garden Meadow also. So there you go, there's two. Two cards. Next week, we will work with the frame. They have two cards and some extra ideas using that. So stay tuned and we'll see you next time. See it, learn it, stamp it.